you ask an interesting question, where are the folks on this stuff? And, and part of the problem, I think, is that we together, the four and a half million of us in BC, are not very good at arithmetic. We're not interested in it. We don't pay attention to it. We go to sleep. These are big numbers. Who can tell a billion from a million and la la la. There's, let me very quickly give you another story that is related to this. Every utility in Canada operates under Canadian generally accepted accounting principles, Canadian GAAP. Right? The government of British Columbia has a, a law in its Financial Administration Act uh, that says that all entities of the government of British Columbia, including departments and commissions, crown corporations and so on, will keep their books according to Canadian GAAP. Except, if inconvenient, uh, when uh, a, a few years ago, when uh, uh, there was a change in the basic accounting standard, the international financial standard came out, you know, boy, that is an eye glazer for you. It meant that uh, companies had to account for things like pension liabilities as they occurred. So if you've got your employee's pension sitting over here and the market goes down, uh, you're supposed to account for that as an, as an obligation of the company. It goes on, onto your cost, it lowers your profits, and so on. Right? This was inconvenient for BC Hydro and for, for its owner. Because in, in the 2008 year, they, they, the value of their pension fund dropped by a couple hundred million dollars and this would have to be recorded as a, as a loss and it would reduce the rather notional profit that Hydro made and therefore the dividend that Victoria could claim. The dividend is important to a minister of finance who wants to claim that he's financially prudent. Um, all right, so what do you do in such a circumstance? Well, the easy thing is change the accounting standard. So suddenly there was a midnight order in council that said that BC Hydro, alone among all other will do its accounting according to an American standard called FASB 980, uh, which is uh, fairly generous on the issue of deferral accounts. A deferral account is set up by a corporation when it's got, let's say, very lumpy capital <laughs> expenditures and a steady stream of income, and it doesn't want, as in the case of utility, to face its customers with a big increase one year and a decrease the next year and so on and so forth. People seem to be happier when their, their rates are steady. So deferral accounts are normal in the utility business. They usually never amount to more than 6 or 7% of the equity of the company, which in, in our case would be a couple hundred million dollars. Uh, BC Hydro has now run up deferral accounts over $5 billion. Right. This is, let me give you an example of a deferral account. They have uh, income which they can accurately, pretty accurately forecast because the rates have been approved by the Utilities Commission for the next couple of years. Right? So that income can be, if you want, it can be accounted for now. Prudently, you would account for it only when you get it. In the out years, let's say from 2019 onward, Hydro says it needs a 14% increase in rates or whatever the number is, and, it, and that's the number. And we know that the government isn't going to stand for it. But they nonetheless put that sum in a deferral account, say that it's money that's owed to them by us or our kids. It's therefore income in the present year. It counts as, a, as part of the notional profit of BC Hydro on which or from which water rentals and, and, uh, and, and dividends are paid. Now, how'd they get there? The American standard allows these deferral accounts to be set up only if the amounts are approved by an independent third-party regulator. <coughs> Aha. So guess what? Uh, a little later, there's another midnight order in council that says that BC Hydro will now operate according to the proscribed standard, which is FASB 980, with no mention of a regulator. They can make it up. They don't have to have a regulator look at it. 
Now, all that's assuming that you think that BCUC is, in fact, an independent regulator at this point, subject as it is to orders, directions, and whatnot, whenever convenient. 